Mr. Hurd said weapons like this have no legitimate use. And martial arts experts like this Kung Fu master tend to agree. He requires his pupils to practice for five years with empty hands before they're allowed to practice with a weapon. And then nothing like the Death Stars. No, we don't use these. Um, again, I don't know anybody that does teach people how to use these. Uh, again, what they're doing is they're just going into a shop buying these and then just you know, getting to a football match or something like this sort of thing and then throwing them at, at people indiscriminately. He called these viciously pointed knuckle dusters disgusting and insisted they wouldn't be used by any martial arts enthusiast. Bruce Lee introduced his one-inch punch at the Long Beach International Karate Championship in 1964. Okay, I'll give you an idea of the power that you can generate from the sticking hands. That's, that comes from fighting this, this close up to the opponent all the while. You haven't got time for the massive drawbacks or anything like that, okay? <laughs> Master William Chung set a world record of 8.3 punches per second. Master Derek Jones was again one of the few people in the world who could match this. Bruce Lee introduced nunchuckers to the world in his films and made them famous as martial arts weapons. All right, so these are weapons that Bruce Lee made famous and uh, I'm pretty shit on myself. Oh, and we have to go across the body doing opposite figure eight at the same time. Bruce Lee, William Chung and Victor Khan taught various forms of sticking hands, a technique to help develop the automatic reflexes in fighting. Derek Jones mastered this technique and developed it further within his body, mind and spirit method, which enabled him to fight blindfolded. Here, he fights his top student of 12 years training. If you stand on too much, you'll fall over and they draw the foot away. <laughs> Combinations of these techniques were used by Derek Jones to develop fight scenes for use in films. The school that I was in, it was in a village in Wales called Brumwell, and it was a very, very rough school. It wasn't so much that I was picked on by people in my class, so it was normally in the class above them or the class above them again. Um, and it was usually sort of two or three of them that used to pick on me and, and hit because they used to say, well, who's the best fighter in your class? And the lads used to say it was me, and then they come and say, oh, you think you're a good fighter? And then they start sort of picking on me and that. So, I mean, fighting was, was just part of my life, really. And I was I was forced to fight or or just you know give in sort of thing. So it's against my nature. So I used to fight. My brother actually told me that there's somebody else called Bruce Lee, and I never heard of him at the time. Um, yeah, I think when I actually did hear me, he'd already died by then anyway. And um, I went to when I was in college. I went to to see a Bruce Lee film then, and I was amazed. I you know. Uh, mainly by his speed and his body and this sort of thing, and uh, I thought he probably knows a few moves as well. 
and I spend the next like, 14, 15 years trying to master them. <laughs> well, when I was doing the, the modified, I was on the, on the stick in hand to cheese out, and I was on it for probably about, about six, seven years, just the stick in hand without learning anything outside of the stick in hand. This taught me that by practicing a set amount of moves, whether it's sort of five or six or whatever the amount is, through such a long period of time that you, you break away from the moves, even though that you, your base is on them. From the traditional, in the traditional, the, the forms that you learn, the Seam Tao and Chum Keel and Wooden Dung and Yoga, have got direct application to an opponent. Now that's lacking in the modified. With the, the fights that I used to have before, the straight fights, that's where I learned the true meaning of, of the emotions involved in, in, a, in, a, in a street fight confrontation or whatever the situation is. And it's these emotions that no one's taught. You're not even, uh, no one's actually said to you, OK, it's, it's all right to be scared or, or it's OK you know, to have fear in the body or, or whatever. It's, there's no one actually explaining what you're going to experience and how to relate to it. I mean, if you're, if you're scared in, in the middle of a fight, most people have a standoffish thing that, you know, they're scared and, you know, they, they, back, they back away from it. And then the whole system that they've learnt freezes. It doesn't work. It's like someone being in the middle of the uh, middle of the road and a car comes along. They look at the car, they freeze, and then they, they get knocked down. Whereas if they, if, if they were more in control of, of the situation, more in control of their body, well then when they sit, they're going to jump out of the way. So this is the, the same principle for martial arts. People learn a martial art and um, it's like being thrown in the deep end. They suddenly get into a real fight and they freeze. They can't use, they're scared. They don't think they should be scared. And they're too worried, worried about probably what their mates are thinking, whether or not you know, they, they're making a good performance because they know martial arts and they're supposed to be something super. They can't get on with the fight. They're too bothered about the, the impression they're making instead of actually getting on with the fight. Um, so what I've done, as I said, is through the street fights that I used to have, was I got to come to terms with the emotions, so with fear. Instead of um, trying to uh, repulse fear, I was actually encouraging fear to be in the body, when you actually get used to being scared. And once you're used to it, the fear of being scared goes, and there's no fear there anymore. Or it's there, but you probably don't notice it. It's just an emotion that goes through the body. It's, it's confidence, really. If you've got your confidence level there, and you've got your skill to back it up, and you've got your, your, your control of your emotions and your strategy and you've practiced hard enough obviously so it's actually part of you then the attitude of, of my self-defense is really positive on myself it doesn't come into it you, it's a reflex action the whole thing has to be a reflex action I don't think I mustn't think in a fight no more than I think I must hit this person I might think of in, in, a, in a fight situation as the thought breaks through your concentration maybe um, especially in the early days, I might think I'm going to punch this person as he comes in range, but I've already kicked him. It's a reflex action. You, the mind, when the fighting actually uh, commences, the mind must be blank, but it mustn't be forced to be blank. It must be blank through, through an actual way of, of training. So. From when I was younger, I, I did actually come to terms with pain and fear and, and the rest of it, and I found that then I would be very easily provoked into a fight situation. Uh, whereas now, sort of Derek Jones, the master, I'm more standoffish with uh, fighting. I don't tend to get involved now. The, the need for having to prove myself has actually gone. And um, from that, I'm a more contented person and um, at peace with the world, as long as the world remains at peace with me. The martial arts world, in both the national and international press acknowledged his art of fighting, body, mind and spirit. This is why Hollywood became interested in him as a teacher, a fight choreographer and a performer. Only his death prevented the fulfilment of his great potential.